My background. My name is Ruth, and I grew up in a traditional Catholic home in South America. My family was not very religious, but they baptized their kids. When we were older, they sent us to Sunday school, and everybody got married in a church. I lived with my mother, my father, my brother, my uncle, and my grandmother. She used to go to church every Sunday, and as I was raised in that environment, I went with her. As I grew up, I, said, I realized something was wrong with Catholicism. It was like there was something fishy in it. I started to go to the youth group gatherings on trips. I was searching for the truth, but I could not find it. I have always been a very sensitive person, questioned everything around me. As a child, I used to go to sleep thinking, what if there was no me? What if I did not exist? How would that be? What if God does not exist? And I used to question everything, but I did not get the answers. Time passed, and In my teen years, I became sick with anorexia and bulimia. I cannot say I did things right. I used to go to parties, drink a lot, but Bistratashem never went into drugs. But I could have, as I wanted to. I felt empty. There was an emptiness inside of me that I could not fill with anything. If I wanted to buy something and I got that, I felt empty anyways. If I wanted to study something and I, for example, passed the test, that would not fill the emptiness. I felt miserable but continued with my life as good as I could. There were ups and downs, but when I hit rock bottom, I was living alone in a small town and in charge of the branch of my family's business in that city. I felt alone and desperate. I tried so many times to get out of the addictive bulimic circle with the food and I realized I could not get out by myself. I needed help. As I have always been a spiritual person, I had a Bible and started to read it, but backwards, meaning reading the Old Testament that the Catholics said it was old and it did not have any use. I read it and read it, not understanding it. But inside of me I had the necessity to go to the beginning of the story because the end the New Testament did not make any sense I remember I cried so much I got tired of crying and asking Hashem to help me get out of that circle of sickness I was in I also asked Hashem to give me a holier life As I was sick of living in that environment, I felt powerless, sick, sad, but still had Imuna, 
that Hashem would help me. Days of praying, reading, crying went by. Until one day, my family came and took me to a daily clinic in the capital of the country where I was raised up. I spent six years there. During the day, I went to the clinic. I did a lot of therapy. I ate there. And then I went to my house in the afternoon. Baruch Hashem, after all those years of intense treatment, I was cured. I felt so thankful, so thankful to Hashem that I thought, how can I thank Him? Hashem changed my life completely from misery to happiness. I must do something. So I started to search for Him. First I looked into the oriental kind of cultures and rituals, but I felt it was not it. Meanwhile, I started to study a career and had a normal life. One day I found Judaism and started to research it more and more. It fascinated me. I did not know how to enter the Jewish world, so I kept studying by internet. I knew some Jewish people, but I often asked them about Judaism, but they did not know any Torah. Whatever they told me was not enough, and many times not the same as the Judaism that I was reading in the web pages. They did not observe Shabbat, they did not dress modestly, and I wonder where could I find that kind of Judaism I read. I knew I had to meet the right per Jewish person. After a while I started dating a Jewish man, and I told him to make me to, to take me to a synagogue, but he took me to a reform synagogue. Immediately After entering the place, I already knew that was not the place I wanted to be in. I had been studying, and what I studied was not practiced in that place. It was like to be in the church again. I told him, no, this is not what I was looking for. The next week, I presented myself in the Chabad house and asked, asked to speak to the main rabbi there. I told him, I want to study to convert to Judaism. And he gave me the Ketsur Shurhan Aruch. I took the book to my home, I opened it, I started to read it. I found out of our conversion course in another Orthodox synagogue and I joined. From there on, my process of conversion began. After several years of studying, the main rabbi of my country called me. There was a very important, important rabbi coming to our country that could do my conversion. He asked me if I wanted to do the conversion, like in two days or that day. I said yes and traveled to the main city immediately. I converted after some months I got married and I continued studying, going to Shirim, to the synagogue. But I realized something was not okay with many of the Jewish leaders in my country. If I wanted to study Shabbat laws, for example, I would present myself in the class, but nobody was there. Just myself. Where's the people? I asked. Oh, the class was canceled because there was not enough people. But then after that, when I went to see the Kabbalah class, The class was full of people. How can that be? Um, I have always been the kind of person that wants to know and understand things. It was around that time when I started to search for a real rabbi. How did I get to know Bezrat Hashem organization? Things in my life were not great. And each time I asked my rabbi a question, he would not answer. He was living in Israel at that time, but these days, with the technology, the email, the WhatsApp, I figured out he could answer, but he did not. Therefore, I decided to look for a real rabbi, one that cares about people. After praying a lot for months, I found the story of Rabbi Alon Anava's life, 
and sometimes I listen to his lectures as well as Rabbi Mizrahi's lectures. Therefore, one day I found out Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, Rabbi Ra'alon Anava, and Rabbi Yaron Ruben were doing a lecture together. I watched it and started to watch Rabbi Ruben's lectures. I loved them because they were simple and direct to the point. He did not go around saying this or that. He said things straight like they are, whether you like it or not. I kind of got addicted to them. And from then on, I have not stopped listening to his lectures. It has been years, but I need them like air. Each lecture gives me strength and the Muna to continue even though Baruch Hashem I have many challenges in my life. Many times I find the answer to a question inside the lecture, like, like if it was made for me. What advice would I give someone? The first thing I would tell someone is do not give up. If you are searching for the right rabbi, do not give up thinking everybody is the same. Do not give up and say, if everybody believes in this person, then it should be okay. Do not stay with your questions with no answer. Do not settle with the minimum mitzvot, because if everybody is like that, then it should be fine. Do not fear the politically correctness of the leaders. Search for the truth. If you feel something is fishy in your community, do not give up searching for the truth until you are sure it is the truth. And believe me when I tell you that you will realize when you find it. There is nothing more rewarding for a person than knowing he or she is in the right path, doing the right thing, improving himself or herself, serving a Kadosh who the right way. I want to tell you that miracles happen, but sometimes we are too blind to see them. We cannot see them. I am grateful to Hashem for all that He has given me, grateful for the suffering I had and the suffering I have, and so grateful for the opportunity to help others. I do not have words that can describe how thankful I am to Rabbi Rubin and the organization. I would not be here if it wasn't for his dedication, for his Torah, for his willingness to help others. He's such a great person, he cares about people. So, what do I do with my gratefulness? I do care of. I try to help with whatever I can, sharing shirim, giving masar, giving tzedakah, distributing the organization's cards, translating videos, talking to friends about Bersrat Hashem, whatever I can, I do. So, here's my advice if you know something is fishy, do not give up searching for the real Torah and after you find it, do give up. Help others do Teshuvah. There is no better thank you offering for Hashem that help his kids get closer to him. And you will never lose like the rabbi says. You will never lose, Rabbi Ruben says always, that doing Kirov is just the best you can do for others and for yourself. Your life will be blessed like my life is. What is so special about this Ratzeshem organization? I do not know any other organization that does what this Ratzeshem does. There are many organizations that help poor people. There are many organizations that raise money to give to soldiers, to the ill, etc. etc. But this Ratzeshem does much more than that. The rabbis and their lives are focused on helping others, not only Jewish people, but also no hides, with time, money, Torah shuring, shiduchim, conversion, advice, answering questions, with everything. They take care of the spiritual and also the physical needs of Torah scholars that are so near right now in Israel because of the Rashaim that govern this land. Everything is special about this tradition. And at the end of the year, they show you what they did with your Masar, with your Tetaka, with your contribution. 
they do videos they show you that they indeed do help that they do send the money to buy groceries that they do what they say they will do thank you for listening to my story may Hashem bless you and help you find the right way the way of talk אני מברך את הרבנים, הרב ירון ראובן, הרב אפרים כחלון, ראשי ארגון בעזרת השם, שעלו בחור בפיוניון, שעלו מעלה מעלה, יהיה להם ברכה והצלחה, הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא בלשונות ליבם, לטובה ולברכה, שבכל אשר יפנו, ישכילו ויצליחו, יזכירו עוד לעשות כאלה וכאלה, הודיעו תורה לאדירה, אמן ואמן.